Hello everybody, it's Peg and welcome to the Great Pumpkin Project. The reason I say that is because my good friend Sylvia Tabor had posted a picture from the Finnebear Open Group, which is a Facebook group, and it was a lovely pumpkin that she called Steampunk. And she kind of challenged a number of the people in our little artist group uh, to do a pumpkin or to see what we could do and so I went to the dollar store and I found a pumpkin it's kind of a styrofoam pumpkin and I found some flowers on stems and uh, leafy green things and some cheesecloth and I thought hey I can do this and I could probably do it for I don't know well, with the supplies from the dollar store, that was $4, and with the things out of my stash, you know, at least under $10, and I thought, well, you know, this is really doable. So, I started with that pumpkin, and you can see I've coated it with the cheesecloth. I'm not using a heat gun on this just because I'm afraid that that styrofoam is going to melt if I put heat to it. So this is a hair dryer that has a cool setting and I just put it on the cool setting and tried to uh, get that to set up a little bit so I could keep working. Now I'm sorry I am working off screen a bit. Um, <laughs> I was watching as Sylvia, who I mentioned previously, and another good friend of mine, Heather Crafter, uh, were broadcasting live. Uh, Craft It Live is a Tuesday event show. And so I was watching the show and creating at the same time. And of course, you know, I, I don't videotape well that way. I don't, but I was getting my project done. And so, yes, I got off screen and I apologize for that. But you can see kind of the process I'm putting um, I didn't think that the coat of cheesecloth was quite enough for what I wanted, so I found some old lace, something uh, one of my friends had given me, and I'm just gluing a layer of the lace over the top of the cheesecloth. I think I'm using some um, dimensional adhesive of some type to put that down with, um, and it's nice and thick, and it does the trick. So. I'm continuing then with my bits and baubles and pieces. Um, I went to, I've got a collection of stuff. I go to the junk store and I pick up things and I have a whole box of buttons that I won when I went to some scrapbook event, uh, oh, probably 20 years ago and I'm still using these buttons. And um, some of those glass little baubles are things that I got from the secondhand store. And then some of the gears and things you can see are Finnebear and um, I think some Tim Holtz and maybe just some regular craft geary type things that, um, you know, you walk down the jewelry aisle and you see and you say, oh, that would look good on something. And here's some snaps from my sewing supplies. And I just continue to use, I think, what was I using? I was using a... Uh, gel matte medium that was um, thickish to put those down with and here you can see I'm coming in with some white uh, Faber-Castell gesso and coating everything um, just to unify and, and you know get things covered up and ready to accept some of the other media that I'm going to put on here. Now I like the white. I, I don't have a problem with that, but I wanted to kind of blend things together and that's why I'm even, you know, doing a wash over the leaves and the pine cone and that sort of thing. I have some uh, sprays that I'm thinking about using at this point and I'm thinking, well, I need a good coat of gesso for those to adhere to. Now, one of the things that I had thought about using, which would have been great on here, are either the Magicals or the H2Os. Um, those are also viable options for you if you choose to do something like this. You can see what I went with were the Color Bloom sprays. And I'm just testing colors out on a piece of paper now to see what they are. Um, you can see that they're quite vibrant. And I've got some tangerine and some 
peony and some teal and some boysenberry and some white and some tea stain and some gold foil and I'm just trying them all out on that piece of paper to see how I like them and how they blend together and I must say they're very beautiful they have a lot of shimmer um, they're kind of wet on the paper there so you can't really get the full effect of them but now I'm going to go in on top of those flowers and I'm going to start adding my sprays and it's a blend so I'll add a color and then I'll come in with my hair dryer and dry that color just so that it kind of sets and doesn't run all over the place and it you just keep layering in that fashion you put a color on um, I think this one may have been hmm, don't quote me it might have been tea dye or it might have been the gold but I wanted uh, to bring some of that in now that definitely is the boysenberry you can tell by how vibrant the color is and depending on how you squeeze the trigger on these uh, is how they come out now I didn't really let that one rip because I didn't want it everywhere and you can see I got more of a splatter effect and that's why I had to come in with a brush and kind of spread it where I wanted it I do like the splatter effect um, actually I may even come back in later with some uh, gesso and splatter some gesso on top just because um, I like that effect it makes it look distressed and a little more worn um, I continue to work around underneath the leaves over the leaves um, as things start to drip then I'm going to get some paper towels out that's the tangerine and it's really bright um, I ended up putting some white over the top just to knock that back a little bit because a lot of these colors are very vibrant vibrant beautiful colors but I was looking for something a little more muted and you can achieve that just by adding some of those more muted colors the tea stain the white um, and layering them in but you have to keep working in layers and applying and mopping and drying and just keep going with it um, you can see I work at this for quite a long while and I I think that it's very beneficial because you like the effects in the end um, it doesn't turn to mud and you've got uh, the colors where you want them so um, you can dab at it with the um, wet paint brush and the paper towel and come in and get what you want now here are some more leaves that are from the Dollar Tree and I thought well this might make a nice table piece so I'm going to spray it with some of those same blue sprays bloom sprays excuse me to uh, unify those with the piece that I have and then um, this is a uh, vintage butterfly that I want to add uh, just kind of mimicking what was in the original piece that was the uh, designer piece that I was using for inspiration. I used some tea stain and some uh, boysenberry on that. These are some um, beads that I picked up on a string from a secondhand store and they just kind of add that little bit of bauble into the bouquet and I'm having a little bit of difficulty with that glue gun. I uh, wasn't cooperating, wasn't feeding the glue right, I was having to push it through. So you can see me fidgeting with that. I'm just trying to get things to stay where I want them to stay. And uh, Yeah, well, that's the way glue guns are sometimes. So uh, I glued a few of those things in place where I wanted them to stay because they are kind of floppy. They will flop around a bit. So I thought, well... I got my glue gun out here I'll just put them down and put them in place so that's it guys that's the great pumpkin challenge I hope you guys make a pumpkin too this was a great deal of fun and um, I just enjoy doing this kind of work so thanks for stopping by if you like it give it a thumbs up um, subscribe tell your friends about it and make a pumpkin bye now